I must have done 2,000 commercials, personally. Uh, I operate on all of them. So by being an operator, you're not only uh, very intimately connected to the actor or the, the whoever's in front of the lens, because when you're shooting, normally it would be a reflex camera. So like that, it's like still photography. I'm looking right into you so I can do this and talk to you, okay? I was told this is not the way we do it. Directors stand back and say, action darlings, and shit like that, okay? I don't do that. I would actually back off and say, hey, come here, or I'll walk around and talk to them, okay? And that was right through my commercial career. When I came to do film, so the relationship with the cameraman was very important, because I'd say, you know what? The light coming in the back there, can we switch the lights off in the room? Can I see the room without any light on? Just light to the windows, because my time in commercials, I noticed that the interiors, for the most part, weren't terribly good. A day scene inside a room, the day scene would frequently be brighter inside than outside, so it all looked phony to me. And one day when I was doing a commercial, I sat there and watched the lights being switched off. And I said, stop right there. I said, oi, the cameraman was called Stan Pavey. A lot of people in the business may just about recognize Stan Pavey. I said, Stanley, just look at this. I want to shoot the room like this after lunch. And he said, he said, dear boy, he said, if you do that, it will be black and will not televise. I said, Stanley, I simply don't believe you. I want to shoot it like this. And guess what? It, we shot it like this, televised beautifully. So I started the process of close communion with cameramen. In other words, light it naturally. Start by lighting through the windows and then see what you got. See where you got to fill it. Today, you've got digital cameras that see better than eyesight, so you don't even need to fill. So there was always this close communion between what was coming through the lens and the guy with the, with the technical know-how. I'd line, I tend to line it up, and then they would say, mm, that's nearly impossible, but we can do it. So I always need a great cameraman. Biggest challenge really was to get a film going. I started my company, I was 27. And the company became very successful immediately. And so we were successful flying for, till now. A bit like an old rock and roll band, you know, we should look better, take better care of ourselves. Getting the business going was easy. It just took off, because I think I knew what I was doing and I had an eye. And that, so there was me and then, uh, that five years later I made my brother join me in the company, Tony Scott, so suddenly there were two of us. Then I realized that we would do film at some point far farther away than I ever dreamt, but I thought it'd be just around the corner. And so we started bringing other directors to actually make a team, a stable of thoroughbreds, if you like. Good guys who would shoot, and we all had this view that one day we would do feature film. Hugh Hudson was with me for almost seven years, right? Um, so in that level, it's kind of very healthy in-house strategy, shoot commercials, Deliver the best you can. Meanwhile, you're working towards making a feature film going. I never dreamt I wouldn't get anything going to us 40. So that was one of the biggest challenges. I kept getting turned down. My reel would be contemporary today. 40 years ago, I would show you a reel now. Well, you'd go, was that made yesterday? So the reels are really good. But at that moment, the feature world could not connect with a director who'd only done 30 seconds of 60 seconds. Today, everybody and their mother comes out of television commercials. Couldn't get going then. Alan Parker, it, there were three. There was Alan Parker, there was Adrian Lyne, and there, were me, there was me, they were all of the same age. And to be honest, there were others, but nothing in this league. I know that. And then the first one to come along really in the league was my brother, uh, Hugh Hudson, definitely. But there was not many. And uh, we all were a little slow in getting going. David Putnam, Lord Putnam, got Parker going, Lyme going, and then finally me in exasperation got me going. I was third up. And But David Putnam was the instigator of opening the door of people from commercials into feature film. What, what makes a, a good story is a good yarn. Uh, you know, frequently you can get mired and, 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 and uh, uh, get stuck in your own 
sludge with getting too intellectual. I think if you can tell the story, what this film is about, in more or less 30 seconds or a minute, less than a minute, then you've probably got something, because everything else after that is enlargement. This film is about boom. And uh, it can be just a straight action adventure, but it's always better if it's character driven. So I'm nearly always looking for very strong characters. And the more I looked, because <clears throat> I was very visual, I was born blessed with a bit of an eye. I've got a very good eye. It was a natural thing for me that. So my, te my material tend to be very visual. I was always criticized for being so visual till I realized that actually it's an advantage because we aren't actually dealing in pictures, dude, right? So I was always getting criticized by the critics. And I said, well, uh, hang on, it's not a radio play. We're actually dealing in pictures. So if the picture is a narrative, uh, that's good, right? Some of the greatest films have been tend to be more visual than wordy. You know, everything that you know now is my own personal experience. So, and I'm a different animal to, you know, Pete, Fred, you know, Alan, whoever. We're all different uh, human beings and therefore I react to things in different, different ways. So there's nothing, there's no generic learning process. The one learning process is to get a camera, go do it. There's no excuse right now where you don't need to, you don't need to, you haven't got celluloid running through that. You can organize three buddies this weekend, go off and make a goddamn movie. The first requirement of anybody to do this job is inordinate stamina, is stamina. If you ain't got stamina, don't do it. You gotta drive the bus, you have to lead the way. That's the term direction, that's what it's about. If you're a nervous ninny, don't do it. If you can't thrive on stress, don't do it. Okay, because you've got to be, you've got to embrace stress. Stress for me is being inactive. I get very stressed if I'm not working. If I'm working and it's coming every direction, I'm completely relaxed. I think um, also authority is terribly important. So even if you're pretending that you know what you're doing at the beginning, try to pretend properly.